So uh, absolutely, it, it isn't one size fits all. <laughs> it no, really is. No, no. <laughs> start with number 10 uh personalization uh it's like buzzword it's been a buzzword for for a long time in our industry now and uh um a couple of days ago i published i published um a point of view with um uh, max stark and a few other um journalists in uh, in the industry about it uh and uh, it was published by the guys at uh, um hospitality net and um it's pretty interesting because the the thing I was saying during during you know when I was writing my point of view was that um, there has been this pretty accurate report published by Gartner, and uh, in the report Gartner predicts that uh, due to a lack of ROI, um, eighty percent of the marketers will stop investing in personalization by twenty twenty five. Now the thing that uh, was that I saw this report used in the wrong context in more than 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 uh, one occasion, uh, especially by people that um, you know, and even people from the industry that were um, thinking that personalization is really only a fad and it's a passing trend. Uh, but the thing that is very interesting, if you read with the due attention the the report, you will understand that. Um, the marketers are dropping personalization not because it's ineffective. They are mainly dropping personalization because it's very hard to um, uh, to get data uh, and extract data from from yeah. silos, and it's quite hard to um, uh, you know to uh, to get some kind of, of security of the data, et cetera, et cetera. So this is, and I mean, it's something I say pretty much at every episode of digital. So people will probably start getting you know. Uh, uh, tired with that, but uh, you see, it's incredibly important to have control over your data. It's very important. It's it is crucial to uh, not to have uh, blockage when it comes to to um, uh, being able to access your data. And uh, you know, Maurice, I think we spoke about that in in several several ways now. We, yes, we talk about what is it. It keep uh, really interesting. Huh? Oh, interesting. I think, you know, and uh, uh, Miai and James, I, I really would like to have your two cents here because it's a, it's a topic that can be, that can be taken from different perspectives, you know, and yeah. of course, from, from the tech perspective, we can talk about a more, you know, the need for uh, open API mass adoption, or we can talk about, you know, the, the, the increasing costs of integration. I think this could be something interesting for you to elaborate a little. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's something you touched on in the document and it's something that, that there's a lot of information out there. You know, there's uh, a lot of the traditional let's, you know, take the, the, the PMS players that are charging huge amounts that are wanting to keep people waiting for a long time to deal with the integration. Um, we really need to foster this culture of being open to being open. Um, yes, we know we have the concerns around data protection, GDPR, things like that. But um, until we have a culture of where um, people are open to exchanging data, you know, it makes it makes it really challenging. And as you said, you know, hotels struggling to see the return on investment because uh, so personalization may die. Well. I mean, it's a wonderful thing to be able to personalize things for guests. It enables us to bring more technology to the room. It enables us to experience the, um, uh, give a greater experience to the guests. But um, while we have some older players that aren't open to being open, it's gonna be very challenging for us. Very, very challenging. Yeah, well, I, think, uh, I think it's a trade-off too, you know, not having access to data and then trying to know enough about your customer to be able to personalize things, you're probably making some assumptions in that point Absolutely. of view. And you're trying to generalize it and it's not working because people no. want to feel special and you can't generalize someone and make them feel special at the same time. It's, it's practically impossible. So- uh, Absolutely. It, it isn't one size fits all. <laughs> it no, really is no, no. I mean, and we all, I think we all received the, 
you know, this is that time of the year where you always receive the the holiday newsletter, right? And yeah. uh, when you look at that, and, I, and you know, I, I had to create like a, a spam filter for that because mm. we all, you know, we all, every hotelier is so obsessed with personalization. But then when you see that, and it's really, you know, faceless kind of marketing action, uh, you yeah. really understand that we are a long way. Um, yeah. so, take a look at my screen. This is something I published a couple of years ago, actually, uh, and uh, but I think it's still relevant. Uh, and um, one of the things I wrote is, uh, here it is, PMS integration is one of the biggest taboos in travel, a subject that you cannot openly talk about it without raising flaming controversies. And I still think this is pretty... It's pretty much the case, you know, uh, even though, you know, with Oracle moving to a more open kind of approach, uh, things are slowly changing. But there's still uh, there is still a big deal of, you know, big PMSs uh, using these closed gardens where you cannot really get any access. Yeah. And I imagine this should be super frustrating even for you guys in terms of, you know, you, you have an, an amazing idea. OK. And. The first thing you need to do is get connected to PMSs, right? And uh, and that is where the, the problems begin because actually, you know, either you have to wait a couple of years or you have to put 20,000 euro uh, on the table just to get connected. So can you elaborate a little on that? Um, so personally, I don't I don't know much about, P I don't even know what PMS stands for unless it came from, you know, my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys are going to have to elaborate a little bit because I don't come from that industry. <laughs> you can all say that around Christmas, my friend. <laughs> but so, you know, it's uh, when it comes to hotels, PMS is like um, it's 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 property management system. So it's like oh, okay, a system okay. where you do manage everything. Gotcha, and, you know, gotcha. and for you, I think uh, when it comes to the payment, maybe you will be more connected to gateways or or even booking engines. But you know the 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 main notion remains the same that um, we have, we do have a problem. Uh, we do have a problem when it comes to to integration, and uh, and it's a problem that affects both the, the the companies like you, you know, uh, travel tech companies or tech companies that are trying to disrupt the market, and um, and have to deal with this uh, closed garden of of data and integrations. And on the other end, you have uh, hoteliers and you have uh, you know marketers that cannot really do anything. Uh, because they are kind of like bound to these, you know, old school technologies. So it's, uh, yeah. I think it's a yeah. vicious circle. So I, I come from 20 years of engineering um, and I've worked in many countries. And so I've, I've thought like pay by face was supposed to be very uh, platform agnostic. Um, you know, it took us two years to, to build something that would be platform agnostic where we can come over to, over the top. Uh, sort of, you know, like what WhatsApp did to traditional cellular SMS. Like, I don't depend on the on the internet, on the network, existing network or existing applications. Um, and it's pretty s standard nowadays that uh, there's some sort of third-party API that I can access for the payment system, or just go over the top. It doesn't matter. You know, I can just create another merchant ac account and go over the top. So, I think we're in the same sort of space to try to personalize the experience, but. Using using AI and machine learning and the face recognition, you know, we're trying right now to to make pay by face work in the in those like cute little Chinese robots that run mm. around. Yeah. Um, so you know, imagine if the you know the robot brings your your room service, and you know you open the door and then you just you know it says hello because it knows who you are or what room you're staying in and then you just basically pay with with your face and then when you check out of the hotel. A little robot standing there in the lobby, and it recognizes you. It knows where you stayed, and and then you can just check out, you know, with, with a nice little friendly robot. I mean, it's probably a little bit of time before those robots are going to actually be very approachable. Then instead of just cute, I think they have a still a kind of a cute factor. Oh, look how cute that thing is. Let's go pet it on the head. Well, you know, cute but, is already something, though. <laughs> yeah, true. So you know, I think I think personalization may, you know. Honestly, I didn't read the full report, but uh, you know we've been trying to personalize websites since since the late '99s, you know, early 2000s. We've been trying. Oh, when someone comes to the website, we can personalize it. So, uh, you know, I think technology is is going to help, but we need to take a step back and understand how to implement it in a way that it's not just cute. You know, it's actually effective. That makes sense. Mm -hmm.
That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. We we use very similar we use very similar words. I don't remember it was uh, um, Maurizio. We had winding trees two weeks ago, right? Yes, right. And uh, and I think what we said is uh, you know we were talking about conversational marketing and we said yeah uh, you know, sure. now, now that chatbots are not sexy anymore. Uh, they are. Uh, they start to be useful, and I think that is, you know, there is always the case with uh, with uh, disruptive technologies.